All right, guys, so you see we're getting a lot of work done here. We took our tarp off our tent, and we put it over top of our A-frame. Uh, that's why we have these uh, other logs cut off short so they don't tear into the tarp. And we put these uprights here in to support those. Now we're laying these uh, pines down over here to help with rain and wind and everything else. But the main part was getting this top part secure. That way we can put our bed in the center and we can also have a fire in this thing if we need to. Uh, we're going to leave one end open. It will probably be this end here because it seems like all the rain is coming in from this direction when it does rain. So that could change at any time. We'll just have extra supplies if we ever need to put up something on one end and open up the other. All right, now that we have all of our logs cut for a raised bed, we got them drying out. It'll go back in there. We just had it in there just to make sure our sizes were correct. The reason why we're drying this out, since we took all the bark off, it's kind of moldy, slimy, it's dead wood. So fire ants and other things like that likes to live in this bark. So drying it out by the sun will help get rid of those critters before we put it in our bed and actually try to lay on this thing. So while that is uh, drying out, we need to get some uh, pine branches and things like that to lay on top of this when we build the bread bed. So still got a lot of work to do. All right, so we are three quarters of the way done. Still got to seal up that end over there where the camera's at. So I got this opening right here. The reason why I got this opening up here is so that when I do have a very small fire, and I do mean small fire, we have ventilation going out this way. Uh, the rain is now here again. And we do have our poncho, which will go on the outside here to seal that up if we ever need it. Right now it's just sitting over on top of the tarp keeping our uh, other camera equipment dry. So, I'm gonna stay in here. The bed is raised. I've gotta get the uh, material for it just to keep, you know, some insulation material so I don't feel like I'm sleeping directly on these logs. So after this rain, we'll go and collect some of that, dry it out, and uh, lay it on the bed. But yeah, I like it. It's tall enough where I can stand. Being stooped over and crawling on the ground. Oh, it takes a lot out of you. I'm 42. I know, it doesn't sound old. I've been a welder for over 20 years. Iron worker, shipyards. I'm, I'm old. Wore out. Broke up. But, as you see, I'm out here. I believe everybody should be out here trying to learn how to survive. Uh, we've had to use a lot of our survival skills on this trip, mainly because of the food issue. Thankfully, we know how to make those fish traps. They've been working great. Our uh, turtle traps are not producing anything except minnows. But, hey, I don't mind eating minnows. But for now, we still got to insulate our walls more. But for the most part, we're almost there. Okay, so, trial by water again. It's raining like crazy. The tent's getting pounded. Is there water coming in? Yeah, a little bit. Everywhere the uh, tarp stops, water comes in. That's why we have the bed so far over. We still gotta close up that end which we didn't get to do because of the rain. Now we've got the poncho on top of the uh, tent right now keeping our electronics good. Except for this one right here I got in my hand. So, now it's the weight game. Okay, so we've got a large portion of everything built. We've been pounded by thunderstorms. <coughs> Excuse me. About to lose my voice. So, we did get the bed partly built, uh, insulated and everything else. I'm going to bring you in here and let me show you it. Alright. 
So we have a raised bed. We'll only use three logs on it for our height. And then we laid down grass on top of it. Now I did use um, saw grass. There it is down there. Palmetto grass. We use that as a base. I've got to get some more of this grass here so it's extra thick. So now we've got the majority of the shelter built. We're getting our little fire started up in here. And like I said, we do have our poncho that we can seal this up here uh, while we're burning, get that first burn in, get some coals, and then we're gonna take some smaller uh, sticks and everything, put up in here a little bit at a time. You can have a fire indoors in these shelters as long as you build it correctly and you keep your fire small. I'm like around this, I've got logs around the uh, fire frame, like a, <coughs> like a U shape right now. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a <coughs> dust or something in my throat. As long as you keep an eye on it and keep it down, keep your flames down, you'll be all right. right now just laying back boiling some water these raised beds are actually very comfortable when you get used to sleeping on them I've been using raised beds for many years so it's nothing to me I mean, I've had injuries and stuff like that I've got messed up spine not from raised beds but from accidents and um, yeah I mean they work great so they're sturdy as can be and they're really designed for laying straight on your back if you start rolling over, make sure you put your hips between the beams. But yeah, they're actually quite comfortable. I keep an eye on that fire. So we're full on drinking water. Alright, I want to clear some things up. I had eaten some raw minnows. It can be done. The temperature of that pond is about the ambient temperature out here. It's warm. Not a good idea. I'm fine. Haven't had no issues. But I've caught fish down here in Florida that had parasites in it. It's like little worms. I've caught sheephead. I've caught freshwater fish with parasites in it. Me swallowing those raw probably was a dumb idea. Fortunately, I didn't get sick. At least time will tell. Cook your food. Also, boil water. If you don't have water treatment tablets, we don't have those with us. If you don't have a Sawyer Mini or a Life Straw, I don't have those with us. We are going straight boiling water. The temperature of that, that pond there... I wouldn't call it a lake because it does have a name, a lake name. Um, but this pond, the water temperature is so warm, the amount of bacteria and possibly waterborne pathogens that are growing in that, even though the water looks clear, that temperature is so warm, to me, it's a breeding ground. So yeah, they say boil your water to a ro rolling boil, three to five minutes. I recommend five minutes. I mean, you already got a campfire going. It doesn't hurt. Now, there'll be plenty that argue with me, and I've seen the statement before. Uh, three minutes is good enough because anything, once it hits that temperature, it's, it will kill any type of virus or any type of pathogen, um, bacteria, which, you know, I agree with them. I've had dysentery twice. I don't, I don't play around with it. I boil that water. And it means I, I boil it for five minutes. And it's a rolling boil. It's not just little air bubbles coming up out of the cup. No, it's boiling. If I left it on there, it would boil out of the pot. So, make sure you boil your water. You don't want to get sick. 
All right, guys. So, like I said, we had some bad thunderstorms, a lot of rain. It rained hard for about two hours. Now, how much water came down? The pond flooded out. And that's why all this water is slowly moving this way towards that. The reason I bring this up is because when we came out here, I almost set up camp out here. I almost put camp right over here because I like the looks of it. But I saw it was low. We set up camp up there on those hills. I always choose the high ground because uh, we would be underwater right now if we would have set up out there and that's not just a little bit of water that's a lot of water it actually gets deeper the more you go I mean it was a lot of rainwater I hear all kind of frogs and stuff like that moving around. Little birds. No turtle. So anyway, I wanted to bring that to your attention. I was out here getting some tinder. Different kind of tinder, guys. And uh, so I can start a fire. There is dry wood out here. The smaller it is, the easier it is to uh, set on fire. <laughs> All right, so they're very close actually. Good morning. So it's our last day here. We've got uh, breakfast. Uh, this is only one of our traps, but I want to go get some water so I can start a fire and purify that. And one of our traps is pretty close to where I get my water at. So we had three good size fish. They're getting bigger. This is about what we're catching. We're catching these sizes and the smaller sizes. Now we've, uh, I've been cooking them over a fire because eating them raw is just not a good idea. So we gotta get a fire started this morning so we can eat breakfast. So yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it's fish. Sure, the, it's the idea that it's just a minnow, but look at that. Nice white meat. As far as the little fish bones, they're really not that bad because they're minnows. But, here we go. I have to get a bunch of them out. But because they're minnows, as long as you chew them up, they're actually not bad compared to an actual full-grown fish that harpoon you in the throat. Mm. We may not have um, been able to catch a lot of food as far as mammals and stuff like that, but we ain't went hungry. This is good. I mean, we've been catching minnows all day long, every day. That's why we have multiple traps set out. It just increases our chances of food. And this is food. Sure beats the hell out of eating grasshoppers all day. All right, guys, so we are finishing up our last day. We are actually heading out very soon. 
Spent most of the morning packing up all the gear, cleaning up, policing the whole area, making sure there's no trash or anything left by me. Now, originally, I was going to leave the shelter in place. Um, I was thinking about coming back out here, do another camp out. It'd be nice to already have the shelter built. But I don't like leaving anything in a campsite. So this will be tore down. Uh, our poncho, of course, is going to be going with us. <clears throat> Same with our tarp. I did have a question. Uh, somebody had asked me if this was waterproof. No, no, it's not. We're using pine needles, and you can see daylight through. Sure, I could have sealed it up as much as I could with the pine needles. Pine needles is not a good deterrent from water. Never has been. Of course, great from shade. That's why we have the tarp and the poncho. It uh, just gives us more security room and everything else, and it keeps our fire dry. Do we stay drier here? Yeah, I mean, we're not 100% dry, but it keeps most of the rain off of us. But in a way, this has been a very long journey, a very tiresome journey. It really has been. The heat here has been horrible. The thunderstorms has been ridiculous. All right, so as far as food, none of our traps or bait has worked. All of our snares, nothing, nothing came out. The big issue we had was fire ants. Fire ants would come in and eat our bait. I tried baiting up at nighttime, leaving traps and snares set in position overnight. Bait was always gone. Um, I believe it's fire ants. Apparently, they don't sleep. So they come in, eat all the peanut butter, eat all the cheese, whatever it was I was using. I even used fish, and nothing left. I mean, pick dry clean. So it's definitely fire ants. Our fish traps, however, have been doing very well. Um, our turtle trap, nothing. Well, we were able to get minnows out of it. So we were able to get food. So unlike our last trip where I was freaking hungry as hell, actually, I'm pretty content. Um, sure, I would have loved to have gotten some bigger game. I would have loved to actually have a bigger fish. But the amount of minnows that were coming in and our passive traps, all I had to do was go and check them. And every few hours, I'd have a handful. So, putting out multiple traps. And all it is, I got a link up here for you, a little card, on those fish traps. Those are the same design fish traps we're using out here. We would walk out about waist deep, drop it down, tie it off. And then I'd go back and check it. With the water temperature the way it's been, it's probably one of the reasons why our fishing has been so horrible with the cane pole and also the trout lines. Even our catfish lines have not done good either. Um, nothing's, nothing's hit them. Minnows have eaten all the bait off. But because of the tree level and all the grass that was in the water, I'm really thinking that all this rain we've been having out here and I'm pretty sure it's been raining up here a lot more. When I first got here, I was sinking in the ground a lot. I think that that lake is flooded, to be honest. I think the actual water line is supposed to be past those trees. And it's just flooded that much. Hence why the water is so warm that rainwater is kind of like stepping in a giant mud puddle. It's warm. Yeah, the deeper, you know, further out you go, the cooler it would be. Um, if I had a boat, a kayak, or canoe, yeah, it'd probably be a better fishing. But, I'm not about to go walk out further in that water with threats of alligators. So anyway guys, I gotta finish cleaning up camp, tear all this stuff down, get the rest of my gear packed up, and then we gotta do our walkout. 